All right, <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us the truth. And they do rule well, peace, blessings, many salutations to you brothers out there striving and fighting to be of that number. All right, the 144,000 prophets who the Lord has preordained to teach this truth, all right, minister the gospel, the word, and essentially overcome and win. All right, until you all say shalom, wa, yahweh b'ashim yahweh to you, as well as the sincere believers in general, both men, women, and children. And may this lesson be, uh, you know, of good service unto you and yours. Uh, Lord willing, it will be edifying, okay? And this is a lesson kind of prompted, you know, in the spirit, you know, just in the past couple of days, been kind of meditating on particular scriptures, and, um, you know, it kind of all came together today. Um, with that being said, you know, as you can see from the title, the kingdom of heaven. All right. The kingdom of heaven. All right. What is that? Right. What What is the kingdom of heaven? What does that entail? Right. You know, what 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 all comes with the kingdom of heaven? Right. Is it is it what Christianity pla uh, painted as far as, you know, uh, floating in the clouds this very vague understanding uh because they don't have the truth right this very vague understanding of uh you know being in the clouds uh you know if you do good while you're here on earth and you know profess the name of jesus christ then you're automatically saved you don't have to worry about nothing um you know you'll be floating up in the clouds with a white robe with a bunch of edomites next to you a gook you know, still eating lobster and, you know, no, man. All right, the scripture lays out exactly what the kingdom of heaven is and what it's going to be like and who it's for. All right, and first and foremost, is for our Lord Yahweh Shai uh, because he, you know, got the victory on this side and that's uh, his reward. But, you know, uh, we have to get the victory as well. Uh, the, which the elect will, again, being preordained and predestined to receive that victory, to un come, come into the fold, essentially, and understand his truth, um, to repent and, you know, be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai and Mashiach in the kingdom to come. So the kingdom will be on earth, right? Let's go ahead and go uh, there. Let's go ahead and go there to Matthew, the sixth chapter, okay? Because it's in the Lord's Prayer. All right, we're going to go into it. Uh, Matthew 6. Um, Matthew 6 and uh, verse 9 and 10. We'll just read verse 9 and 10 because those will be the points. All right. It says, After this manner, pray ye, uh, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right. Or in the Paleo Hebrew would be Abanawa. All right, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash, Hayashimka, Yahweh. All right, Bashim Yahushai, hallowed be thy name, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Right, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right, which will be um, uh, Malakwathka, Daba'a, Ratazaka, Haya Isha. Right? Thy will be done on earth, or thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? So the earth abideth forever, right? As we read in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter and the fourth fourth verse, right? So a lot of people are under the, under the common misconception that the, the end of the world means what? That the earth is literally going to be destroyed. And it will be, no, but the earth abideth forever. Remember that the, in the beginning with the first Adam, this was created to be what? Paradise, Eden, right? This was created to be the place of, you know, the end all be all, where men would be I immortal, right? But there was this slope in which we declined and declined and declined after Adam, you know, pretty much transgressed the woman, you know, essentially him following the woman, a woman going off, but, um, you know, that was a transgression in which sin entered into the world, and now we've had this constant battle, and over time, gotten worse and worse, <laughs> kingdoms have rose, kingdoms have fallen, 
empires have ruled. They all had their time. But wickedness cannot live. All right. Let me put it like this, rather. The only kingdom that will live or, or uh, continue on forever is the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because a righteousness will be established. Why? Because of perfection will be established. Why? Because our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach is coming back to establish that order, right? In which the Heavenly Father has prescribed, right? And the elect, first and foremost, the whole nation of Israel, but the elect are going to get those new hearts of flesh, that it talks about in Ezekiel, all right, wherein the written uh, uh, the laws will be written within our inward parts. Why right? will be made perfect? There will be no more sin, right? There will be no more death for the Israelites. So that vibration will come on the earth in the kingdom of heaven, right? These, are, if you're following me here, these are these are things that are taking place within the kingdom of heaven, right? The end of this society has to come, Esau being the end of the world, Jacob being the beginning of it that followeth, pursuant to Second Ezra, the 6th chapter and the ninth verse, right, the parting asunder of times, as the prophet Ezra was inquiring the, unto the angel about, right? So this place is going to be destroyed, thermonuclear destruction in America, the lake of fire, all these other kingdoms being taken down, Revelation 19, he cometh with clouds. Hey, the Lord, <laughs> this, is, this is how it's going to begin, and then... Or this is, however, the end, uh, you know, of this kingdom is the beginning of ours to come, in which all this happening, you know, in a, in a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? All this happening, happening simultaneously, the destruction and our salvation, okay, all coming together uh, to where the elect get be gets beamed up in the chariots, the so-called UFOs, all right, which are the vehicles of the angels. All right, and um, essentially the ceremony that takes place in the heavens, um, you know, we, we get to drink wine with Yahweh Shai as he promised us, and then we're going we gonna to get crowned, we're going to gonna receive those new bodies first, we're going to get crowned, and then we're going to come back into the earth to perform the will of the Heavenly Father and start to establish the said kingdom, all right, you know, dig them out of the holes of the rocks, so on and so forth, right? A lot of our people will get on board. Those that remain, those that don't, they're going to be destroyed and spent down and have to come back through the process of regeneration or reincarnation, all right, which is biblical. Now, when the kingdom of heaven is being established, right, the Lord is going to reign supreme under him who? <laughs> King David, as it was promised him, right, or in the regeneration, if you can receive it, which is Peter, okay? Now, from there, we're going to go here. In Matthew, um, was it Matthew 19? Matthew 16, I believe. Oh, man. Oh, please don't come over here and say anything. Oh, man. Anyways. Uh, let's see, Salakia, Matthew 16, and verse 17, all right. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Borzona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Why? Because Peter had told him, he was like, who, who do you, uh, Yahweh shall asked him, who do you say that I am? Because everybody said Jeremiah, you know, uh, Elijah, you know, so on and so forth. Some would say that you are John the, uh, you know, uh, John the Baptist, right? But he said, no, you are the anointed. You're the Messiah. You're the one that was spoken about all throughout the Old Testament, right? All throughout the scrolls, right? So it says, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, right? That spirit, the Holy Spirit, right? That being set apart spirit had revealed that understanding unto Peter, all right? The head of the church. And it says, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, which Peter literally means rock, all right, <laughs> I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, that took place during that time period, right? But guess what? It was overtaken. It had its time period, but that fell. So what is this, what is this Yahweh Shai making mention of when he says the gates of hell shall not overtake it? Death won't overtake it. Pretty much... A corruption 
won't be able to victor over it anymore. That's only going to take place in the kingdom of heaven. So this is something that will come to pass in the future, man. All right? Let me turn off this uh, um, low, low battery mode. All right? Now, let's continue reading on. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now let's go ahead and grab this word, keys. So you, the apostle Peter is being given pretty much the, <laughs> the foreknowledge to know that he's going to have a, a particular position in the kingdom to come. All right. Now when you go into this word, key, in the Greek is Strong's G. 2807, all right, Cleese, Cleese, all right, it says a key, since the keeper of the keys has the power to open and to shut, <laughs> which a hollow size of door, all right, it says metaphor in the New Testament to denote power and authority of various kinds, right, to denote power and authority of various kinds, right, now when you grab the root word, Okay, it's Cleo, all right, it says to shut up, or to shut, shut up, metaphor, to cause the heavens to withhold rain, now where is that scripture written at, it's a prophecy written in Micah the fourth chapter, and pertaining to, in the kingdom to come, if the heathens aren't in order, if they, you will have that power, all right, as the Israelites, and though given in a certain authority that we're given whatever order we may fall in those israelites will have those those uh men will have the authority to and the power and the might to be able to cut off the water supply man to cause a drought judgment power these these this this uh like i said to denote power and authority of various kinds right yeah it's going to be done in righteousness though that's uh, uh, something to look forward to in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? It says, it says to shut up compassion so that it is like a thing inaccessible to one to be devoid of pity towards one to obstruct the entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Right? So you're going to have power. You're going to have a say-so. Right? Which leads me to my next scripture. In Matthew the 19th chapter right and uh, I want to say 27 um, uh, because he goes into the house a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom it's easier for a camel right and then it went, if I started verse 25, Matthew 19 to 25, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Right? Because because the scripture even says, what, that the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Okay? But I believe that's in 1 Peter, but it says, and this being uh, the point. Oh, no. We'll continue reading on, though. It says, verse 26, But, but Yahweh Shai beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with the Most High all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Yea, also, also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, let's go ahead and grab this word, judging, okay? Because to be a judge is to have authority. To be a judge is to be able to make decision, to, to execute uh, punishment, all right? To give a sentence, right? To weigh out what... Uh, a proper judgment is needed for whatever situation arises. So through the Spirit, you know, because it's because the Lord even made mention of it. Another thing, you know, to think about is this mentality. 
You know, this is another thing to, to ponder on the mentality of the kingdom of heaven, man. Because the Lord Yahweh Shai said, neither shall they say lower here for the kingdom of heaven is within you, man. Okay? So this that, that starts within us today as a mindset before we get those new bodies. Before that happens, it's starting right now with a, a particular mindset in which is being geared toward being a judge in the kingdom to come. Making proper judgment now. All right? And being able to do that consistently despite the flesh being uh, against those things, man. If we continue to walk in the spirit earnestly and truthfully, we won't be able to lose, man. That's our earnest expectation and our hope. See, you, 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 you fall short in the flesh from time to time and that will happen, right? But the scripture says in Sirach, the 14th chapter, Blessed is he whose conscience hasn't condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord, man. See, we have hope that this, this slavery, this bondage, this, this persecution that we're constantly under, that this decrepit flesh that we're in, that it's not for forever, man. So it's a particular mindset that comes with the kingdom of heaven. Starting within us, it's a mindset, Right? It's a mindset, and we're going to go a little more into it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off on this, because like I said, um, I'll read it again. I don't want to veer off. I kind of want to, you know, do it do it in a particular order. But nevertheless, Matthew 19 and 28, And Yahweh said, said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also, also shall sit upon twelve thrones, Judging the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So judging isn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? It can be. But that power is, again, going to be denoted of various, the, the power of various kinds, right? In which what we read in Matthew, the 16th chapter, right? Those keys, all right? Being given unto Peter, the head of the church, all right? And it'll trick, trickle down to the rest of the order of the elect, however that may look. However that may exactly be, we'll know at that point in time, okay? But that 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 <laughs> that power is coming, man. Alright? Um now when you grab that word again, when you grab that word judging. Alright, in the Greek strongs G twenty nine nineteen Krino. Krino, it says to separate. Put asunder, pick out, select, choose. Now let me go down a little bit. All right, it says to be of opinion, deem, think, to be of, of opinion, to determine, resolve, decree, to judge. All right, let's go down a little bit. To rule, govern. Look, it says we can go up to uh, section A or section. Uh, um. Of section four, subsection B, uh, I, it says, of those who act the part of judges or arbiters in matters of common life or pass judgment on the deeds and words of others. Continuing on to rule, govern, right? Quick precept that comes to mind. Because again, these are future prophecies, man. Dealing with, with what? The kingdom to come. <laughs> the most <laughs> prolific Think time in history, <laughs> right? Where where life will begin to flourish yet again, because again we've been on a on a decline, a slope ever since, you know, the the, the uh, Adam Adam's transgression. Uh, it was a precept I was gonna get uh, Isaiah. 9 verse 6 and 7 Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty power the everlasting father the prince of peace right and this is referring to Yahweh Shai right it says of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end Upon the throne of David <laughs> and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice 
from henceforth even forever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, right? Because Habakkuk, the first chapter, tells us what? That because that the Lord is having us to behold grievousness. How long, O oh Lord, will we have to look at these things and see these things and experience these things? Because what? The law is slack, man. Therefore, righteous judgment does never go forth, okay? But in the kingdom of heaven, the law is going to be the standard. Go read Isaiah, the second chapter. <laughs> it says the law will go forth out of Israel. There won't be any more war. We're going to rule with that rod of iron. Matter of fact, Revelation 2 Matter of fact, um, and that was pretty much it on that Matthew 19. So let's go Revelation 2, and then I think I have a few more, um, if the Spirit allows. Uh, but, yeah. Revelation 2, and uh, verse 25, right? But that, and this is red letter. This is our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach speaking. Unto those that can receive it, it says, But that which they have already, hold fast till I come. Right? We have to hold fast that faithful word in which we've been taught. Right? In which, you know, the words spoken through the Spirit, like like Yahweh Shai said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profiteth nothing. So when we heard these words, it quickened us. Right? It quickened us. It, it, it awoken something out of us. It stirred up our pure minds by the way of remembrance in which you know, we were drawn to it. We had to seek after, we had to keep going. And <laughs> we're still like that today, man. You know? But it says, again, Yahweh Shai is speaking, verse 26, Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. See? So there you go, Yahweh Shai making it plain that there's going to be a, a hierarchy. There's going to be nations above other nations. Or a nation above the other nations. All right, and that nation, if you, you probably you've been around for a little while, you should know, is going to be the nation of Israel being restored into our former glory because the Lord has always preferred us, preferred, preferred us over what? The other nations, man. They are, they've been likened unto dung, <laughs> a, a drop that falleth from a bucket, spittle, okay? But they're going to be, they're going to be good slaves in the kingdom to come, man. And it's not like we're going to just, you know, there is a punishment written because they use, they, you, you, you got to understand the Heavenly Father, like this dispensation of time that has occurred to where we've been downtrodden, beaten, mutilated. Uh, we've been, um, you know, medical experiments. We've been all, all these different wicked ass things under the hands of first and foremost, our main enemy, the Edomite, but how these dogs have licked our sores. All right. There's a punishment written for that, man. Go read out Obadiah, uh, uh, starting at verse 15 down to 18. The heathen shall drink continually, man. They shall swallow, and they shall be as though they had not been, man. There's a day coming for the heathen, man, because they've had their time to shine in these various different kingdoms. I mean, look at history. The history's there, and the prophecy is here. So if the prophecy in the scripture was right about these... These different kingdoms, you know, you got the the Grecians, the Romans, you know, the Babylonians, you got these very Persians, uh, the, the enemies, the different empires that have ruled throughout time and is on point with it. How much more so the kingdom to come, man? This is a book of living waters. These words do not fail, man. And that's what a majority of these people fail to realize. So the kingdom of heaven, all right, is coming and it's here in the spirit, man. Again, starting with this mindset. In which when we're out there on the highways and hedges, when we're doing these sit-down lessons, people can't grasp what's being said. They can't reason within themselves. They don't even think to take it seriously at all. It's something so far beyond <laughs> everything they, they, they could imagine. And that's why it also says, you know, kind of makes me think of that, how, how I had said that, the wisdom of Solomon 5, man, so far above all that they have imagined, our deliverance, Right? How are they numbered among the children of the Most High? Do you see? Those that doubt, those that, you know, scoff, they will be confounded, man. And will lose. But for those of you brothers and few sisters that believe and that are willing to put up a, a fight and endure, you know, 
pray for that spirit to stay upon you, man, because we're coming into some very serious times, okay? Again, prophetic times. So Revelation 2, and I know I was rambling a little bit, forgive me. Revelation 2, verse 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Joint heirs are right, in the rulership to come. Yahweh Shai is coming down to take all these kingdoms. You know? <laughs> you think we're not going to get the heathen in order, man? But at the end of the day, when the righteous are in authority, the people will rejoice, man. Everything is in a state of mourning right now because the wicked beareth rule. Right? Um, let me see what else I have. Forgive me. Right. And then, you you know, you have the example, you know, I had this written down with Acts, the first chapter going into the, the, the disciples coming into him. We don't have to grab it. You know, I believe the point's really been made, but the disciples essentially coming into uh, unto Yahweh Shai asking him, you know, without let this time restore again, again, you know, the kingdom unto Israel or when when is the kingdom of uh, heaven going to be like, we, we, where is it? We long for it. We desire it. All right. Second Peter, the third chapter, we look for new heavens and a new earth where endureth righteousness, right? So that's the mindset of where we're at today, too. You know, totally focused and honed in on <laughs> redeeming the time because the days are evil. Understanding the will of the Lord right now and what's required of us as individuals, all right? What our role may be within the ministry, okay? Whether it be a teacher, you know, prophet, whether it be a help, right? Whether it be, you know, you tithe or all, you know, all of the above. Hey, man, we need all the mercy we can get. So, hey, you know, we want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can to, hey, you know, uh, 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 uplift and glorify, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, you know, by being a brother, by being all these various diff different things, man. You know, so that's that mindset, man. That's it's the mindset. The kingdom of heaven is within you again. Yahweh Shai made mention of it. It's a mindset that has been stirred up and has been awakened in these latter days, right? In which you have these little manospheres and 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 uh, you know what do they call them? Red pill communities, right? They have a, a in inkling of what it is, but they don't have it all, man, because they're, they're not think they're thinking of partying and bullshitting, you know, they might be thinking of having a business or, but we're thinking about owning people, man, we're thinking about having slaves, bro, we're thinking about ha having, having, uh, 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 cities, man, like the parable goes into, man, Yahweh Shai, hey, giving talents out, we're looking to flip those talents now that we may receive the reward when he comes back, and that he won't be uh, looking at us like that, like the individual who folded up his talent up in a napkin and hid it away. Oh, I feared you, Lord, for thou art an austere man. <laughs> I know that thou comest and goest. Nah, man. We're doing the work now that we may reap the reward to come. Right? So, again, the mindset, bro, that these people just do not have. The kingdom of heaven is starting now in the mind, but... That king, the kingdom of heaven has been displayed, uh, uh, described throughout this video, man. It starts with the downfall of this, this place through this word, all right? The power of this word, all right? Like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, man, this is what the scriptures say in Jeremiah. Fire and, and wood. <clears throat> man, Lord willing, I could grab it. Ooh, Jeremiah 5 and 14, it says, Wherefore thus saith the Lord, power of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them, right? There's another one I want to say in James, but nevertheless, you know, if a brother knows where it's at, you can post it on the comment board. Um, but, bro, <laughs> that's what's happening. This word, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, Using us as vessels is tearing, taking down this place, man. And it's beautiful. We're literally speaking things into existence. Okay? And the more that that happens, the, the quicker these things happen, the closer we get until what? 
shit really hitting the fan and Yahweh Shai coming, having having to come, Michael the Archangel having to intervene, intervene. All right, spiritual power is taking place, man. Divine intervention, man. But then once once we hit those chariots, we got that W, man. <laughs> once we get on them chariots, once we get beat up at that at that point when the nukes are going off, I heard El Yashawamba say it and made you know it stuck with me. Once those nukes are going off, you. you know, Either the Lord gonna beam me up or he not. <laughs> you know? It's all gonna happen simultaneously, man. Either you're gonna get beamed up or you not, bro. <laughs> At that point it's just like, Lord, please, Bubba Kasha, y'all about some y'all shot, take me. You know? But the Lord is not unrighteous to forget our works and labor of love, man. So, you know, I know I'm kinda of rambling on, but it's exciting, man. It's very exciting, you know, knowing how close we are. Um uh, man, it's you know, shame. It is what it is, man. I had to work. You know, got a good gig and everything. So, you know, I ain't complaining. But really wish I could have been there uh, with the brothers tonight, man. They went in for over four hours, man. So, man, that was beautiful. But nevertheless, you know, like I said, I know I'm rambling, man. Um, pretty much the point being made, the kingdom of heaven all right, starts uh, physically when our Lord, Yahweh Shai, comes back. Um, you're going to have 144,000 prophets that are going to reign with him. That's the election written about in the scriptures, Revelation, the seventh chapter, uh, 7,000 men that will not kneel to the image of Baal. All right. Um, and essentially, you know, rulership, uh, kingship, power, might, strength from on high, man. Uh, and that, and that's exactly what's going to take place in the kingdom of heaven. So, Lord willing, that was edifying, man. You know, uh, we long for these things to take place. We, we, we look for a new heavens and a new earth. Again, we're in dwelling righteousness. Uh, but I want to end off, close out by saying, For this understanding, for this truth, all right? And for the spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Again, peace, blessings, many salutations to the elect. Shalom.